In this video, I would like to tell you a few words about combining CG elements over the live footage. That's the first clip that we will be working on. And I would like to show you how to achieve this result. Here's another example that gives us certain possibilities. But in this case, I would like to draw your attention to one issue. This is an interlaced footage, and I will show you how to deal with something like that. Both of those clips require tracking. I have tracked this one and placed some test mesh just to see if the track works. And as you can see, it works pretty well. So now we can place anything into our scene and it will nicely follow the movement of the camera. Those clips are available for free. The one with the stadium comes from stockfootageforfree.com. We can start browsing. Here we have the sports category. And clip number four is the one. Here's the link to download the clip. The one with the laptop comes from hollywoodcamerawork.us. Here we have the download section, tracking plates. And here's the clip and the link to it. I assume that you know how to track the camera motion, so I will not be focusing on this process at all in this video. If you don't know how to do it, there are many resources in the net available for free, so I thought that it would be a waste of time to repeat everything here in this series. Some time ago I have recorded a series of videos about tracking. It's available on my site, bartekskorupa.com. There are three parts that explain almost every aspect of tracking camera tracking and object tracking. There is also a video about the lens distortion issue. I have recorded those videos using Blender 2.61, so it may seem that they are outdated, but that's not true. Many things have been improved in the tracking process, but the general idea remained the same. When we open the laptop clip in the movie editor, we notice that something is wrong with the picture aspect ratio. That's because all of the clips from hollywoodcamerawork.us use non-square pixels. The pixel aspect ratio of those clips is 1.5. It is very important not to make a very simple mistake. Here we have the display section and we have the display aspect ratio. We can set the X aspect ratio to 1.5 and the clip looks okay, but that's just the display. And we shouldn't change it here. Let's set it back to 1. And in order to have everything properly tracked, we have to change the camera data. We have to set the correct pixel aspect ratio here. So let's set it to 1.5. And now we can begin tracking. I have already done this and it was relatively easy. As you can see, I used only 11 track points. And for our purposes, the solution that I get is enough. It's not perfect, but it works. When we look at the beginning of the clip, it seems that we don't even have to key out the green screen. But then we see that the hand of the guy is covering the screen, so we will have to key it out. That's the image that I want to place on this laptop screen. I am mostly interested in this area, but I have purposely made this image a little bit bigger and filled the edges with this dark gray color. Okay, so here's how my scene is set up. I have placed the plane here and positioned it correctly on the screen of the laptop. As you can see, the boundaries of this plane substantially exceed the area that should be covered. But I will take care about it a little bit later. That's the camera and that's its motion. This plane has been UV unwrapped. I applied this image as a texture and made this material shadeless. There is no lamp in the scene. And here, in the shading options of the render settings, I have disabled shadows, subsurface scattering, environment maps, ray tracing, because I simply don't need it. I have set the alpha mode to straight, and this plane is placed in layer number one, and render layer number one, I called this render layer foreground. I have also created another plane and placed it in layer number two, and this one will serve me as the mask. I have created the separate render layer for rendering just this plane and it's called mask. The material for this is just pure white color, shadeless. So when we render this, we have only two images as the result. That's the first one, our foreground, and this one, our mask. The idea of compositing this is to place this over this. That's the movie clip node. We can find it here, input, movie clip. 
and here we select the movie clip that we want to use. As you can see, it gives us the original dimensions of the clip without considering the pixel aspect ratio. The dimensions of the clip are 1280 by 1080. And when we use such resolution for our scene, we get something like this. So we can do two things. We can set the pixel aspect ratio here. Let's set the X aspect to 1.5. Or we can leave the square pixels, but set the proper dimensions. Set the dimensions that will match 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So we can make it 1920 by 1080, but I decided to render everything with a resolution of 1280 by 720. The clip that we use here has to match those dimensions, so let's pass it through the distort scale node, use the render size, plug it here, and we have restored the proper proportions of this movie clip. New functionality has been added to the scale node. The default option is stretch, which means that the image that goes here will be stretched to fit the size specified here. But we can change it to fit, so this will preserve the original proportions of the image. Or we can choose crop, this will also preserve the dimensions, but crop the image to fit the scale specified here. In our case, stretch is the option to choose. Another issue that we have here is the lens distortion. I used the automatic distortion refinement and those are the values that I got. That's the original footage and undistorted version of it would look like this. And that's the one that we have to use in compositing. So here we have to undistort this footage. So let's use distort movie distortion and let's plug it here. And here we choose the option undistort. The data from the movie clip will be used to calculate the parameters for undistortion. We have something weird happening here at the edges, but we will take care about it later on. At the first glance, it seems that the easiest way to composite my image onto the screen would be simply to key out this green screen and place this image on top of the image that I want to place on the screen. But when we start playing with it, certain problems appear. This green color is not even, so it will not want to key out very nicely. And another issue that we will have will be despealing. When we apply the despeal, all of the image will be affected. And that's not necessarily what we want. So I decided to use a little bit different technique. I split this process into two steps. At first, I would like to place this on top of this using this as the factor. So let's add the color mix node, take the movie clip as the first input, our image as the second one, turn this option on, but that's not enough because this plane is too large. But when we use the alpha channel of this image as the factor of this mix node, we will get this. I had to re-render this because I had some different frame in the buffer. So again, we place the image on top of the footage and use the alpha of our mask render layer as the factor here and that's the result that we get. But now we lost the hand. So I will take another instance of my movie clip and place it on top of everything. But this time I will use the keyed version of it. But I will also limit the influence of this instance only to the screen. So the surrounding pixels will be taken from the original movie clip. So let's now key out this green screen. I will use the new node that is available since Blender 2.64. We can find it here, mat keying. If you remember the episode about keying the green screen footage, you know that the process is split into several parts. We have to create the proper alpha channel, then take care about despealing. Sometimes we have to adjust the levels of the alpha channel. Sometimes we need to pre-blur the image apply some blur afterwards, delayed erode the mat. As you can see, this node has all of those elements built inside. So we can take our image, plug it to this node, sample the color. So that's the alpha channel that has been created. And as you can see, it's far from being okay. The image has been automatically dispeeled. Let's take a look at the difference. Let's set the dispeal factor to zero. So we see that without dispealing, we will have issues at the edges here. So in this area, dispealing is good, but we would rather not alter the colors outside the screen 
and when we set the dispel factor to 1, we see that those colors change. But first let's take care about the alpha channel. So here we can increase the clip black. Of course, as you can see, it destroyed the surrounding areas, but we don't have to worry about it because we will limit the influence of this image only to this area. And we will use our mask render layer for this. We only have to take care about the screen and the hand here. So we can decrease the clip white. If we are not happy with the result, we can try to change this color. I'm trying to change the hue of it and it seems that something like that will do the trick. Those are the final settings that I used. And that's the color. This is my final alpha channel, which is far from being okay, but if we limit this only to the screen, I will get exactly what I want. So here's the mix note where I am mixing this with this which is the keyed version of the movie clip. That's the result that I get, so I have to use the alpha channel of the second input, but the spilling of this footage will alter those pixels as well, and I don't want that, so I want to limit the influence of this note only to the alpha channel of my mask render layer. And now everything is fine. But when I take a closer look here, I see some weird line here. But I can easily get rid of it if I pass the alpha channel of my mask render layer through delayed erode node and I expand it a little bit. And when I do so, that's the result that I get. And when we take a closer look at it, something is not right here. We would definitely want to apply some color correction to the content of the screen. It would also be good to introduce some imperfections of the screen, like a little bit of the shading around the edges here. Light wrap around the hand would help a lot. So let's now take a look at the final compositing setup that looks like this. Here I have my three inputs. That's the movie clip, that's my mask render layer, and as you can see I decided to apply some texture on it, and this will serve me as the source of the imperfections of the laptop screen. And that's my foreground render layer, which is the content of the screen. So here in this area I am modifying those inputs, and here I am mixing the results together. Here's my first mix note, where I have taken my movie clip and as the second input I used the content. As the factor of this mix note, I used this, which is the alpha channel of my mask render layer. And that's the result that I get. This is without any adjustments to the content of the screen. But I decided to desaturate this a little bit, using the technique that I told you about many times, mixing the black and white version of the image with a colorful version of the image. So that's the desaturated version of it. And then I applied some color correction using the color balance node. Then I wanted to introduce those imperfections of the screen. So I used this. This is my mask render layer. I applied some curve adjustments to it. So it looks like this. And then I multiplied it by this. I used the mix node for this with the multiply blending mode. And only having done all of that, I plugged this result into the second input of this mix note where I am mixing it with this one. So that's the result of all of those operations. Then I connected the result of it to another mix note where as the second input I used the keyed out version of the movie clip. In order not to have the influence of this peeling in those areas I used this as the factor so that's the result that I get. I'm not happy with this result, so before I mix it in, I added some light wrap over it. And it's happening in this mix note with add blending mode. We already know this technique, we take the background, in our case this is the content of the screen, and add the blurred version of it, which looks like this, on top of our hand, using blurred inverted alpha of this one as the factor. So we take the alpha channel of it, invert this, blur it, then we can control the power of the light wrap by multiplying this by some figure, which is happening here, and I can take this as the factor of this mix note with the add blending mode, where I am adding this to this. That's my final result, and here I have everything mixed together. Okay, now the lens distortion. We know that we have to use the undistorted version of the footage, such that the CG elements match. I use this footage twice in this setup. 
the first time as the first input of this mix note. So the image goes from the source and here in those notes it is undistorted and then scaled such that it fits the render size. And for the second time I am using the keyed version of it and I am mixing it here in this note but I wanted to use the keying note on the original footage because it's simply better to first key out everything working on the original pixels and then undistort and scale the result of it. So here I am using the undistort note and the scale note for the second time. So here we are looking at the result of mixing all of those elements together and we have the undistorted version of the footage so we have those weird things happening at the edges. So in order to get rid of all of this I would want to distort the final result again and I'm doing it here where I am taking this result and passing it through the movie distortion note where instead of using the undistort option I use the distort option and that's the result that I get. But let's take a look at the edges right now. Intuitively it should have fixed all of the issues but as you can see it didn't. So I have passed this result through the distort scale note and in this case I used the relative option and I have plucked the same value for x and y and I have sized this image up just a little bit so now when we take a look at the edge here having scaled it up we see that those problems disappeared and that's the final result that I get and this is how it looks like in motion. Now let's take a look at this clip. I have tracked this, in this case I have used a little bit more tracking points and it gave me pretty good results. I have placed just some test mesh here but you can of course be a little bit more creative, maybe place some large advertisement here or try to change the construction of the stadium a little bit but I would leave this creative decision to you. I would like to take care about one particular issue that we have with this footage. The footage itself is not included into the source files, you have to download it yourself and in order to be able to use my solution and work on the file that I provide, the only thing that needs to be done is to go to the movie clip editor and here in the footage settings you will simply have to replace the footage by the one that you download. So we hit this button choose the footage, hit enter and we are done. In case of this clip we don't have any problems with resolution. It comes to us in a full HD resolution 1920 by 1080 and it uses square pixels. But the issue that we have can be seen here when we zoom in. The footage is interlaced which means that the odd lines of this image and the even lines of this image were captured not exactly at the same moment. I don't want to explain the details of interlacing the footage very deeply here in this video. There are a lot of resources in the net that explain this phenomenon. Some time ago I have recorded the tutorial explaining this. It's for After Effects but I think it may also be interesting for us Blender users. It's available on AE Tuts Plus. It was published in mid-2010 and it's called Interlaced Footage Demystified. So what are our options in this case? We want to combine CG elements over this footage. We have two solutions and the choice depends on the purpose of our final output. If we want to deliver it to television we can interlace our CG elements. In order to do so we go here to the render options and we can choose to render fields. Then we have to determine if we want to use the upper field first or the lower field first. This video is shot using the order of upper field first. So that's the option that we have to choose here and our CG elements will be nicely interlaced and will match this footage. But if we don't deliver to television and want our piece to be displayed on computer screens we would rather not interlace our CG elements but deinterlace the footage. And let me now show you how we can do it in Blender. Deinterlacing of the video will result in loss of half of the vertical resolution. 
but we can't do much about it. The idea here is to use only the odd lines of the image or only the even lines of the image. So we will be using every second line of the image. Then we have to fill the gaps and I would like them to be filled with the average of the line above and the line below. So here's how we can do it. We need to have our clip and we also need to use another image, the scan line. Something that looks like this. Every second line of this image is white and the remaining lines are black. It has to have exactly the same resolution as our movie clip. First, let me show you how we can create this scan line in Blender. I have used the separate scene for that and I called it the interlace. In this scene, I have created the plane that has the height of one unit and the width equal to horizontal resolution of our scene which in our case is 1920. Then I applied the RE modifier to it. The vertical resolution of our image is 1080, so I took half of this value and used it as the count of our RE. That's the result that I get. I used the offset of minus two, relative offset, so I have one full line and one empty line. One full line and one empty line. Then in order to render this, I used the orthographic camera. I have pointed it directly down and placed it a little bit above my object. Then as the orthographic scale, I used 1920. When I render this, I get the perfect scan line. I have saved this image and used it as an image input here in compositing. So now here in this note, I am mixing my original movie clip with something like this and I will explain it in a moment, where as the factor I used this scan line. So the areas that are black in this scan line will be filled with the original image. And here's the image that I am mixing in. I have passed the original image through the translate node, where I moved it minus one on the Y axis. Here I am doing exactly the same, but instead of using minus one, I used one on the Y axis. Then I simply mixed those images together using the factor of 0.5. So this fills the missing lines with the average of the line above and line below. And this is mixed with the original image using the scan line as the factor. And this gives us deinterlaced version of the footage. As I mentioned before, we of course lose half of the vertical resolution, but if we want our video to be displayed on computer screen, it's better to have this instead of this. So here we have deinterlaced version of our movie clip, which then is undistorted, scaled to the render size, and then all of the remaining nodes simply composite this test mesh such that finally it looks like this. If you decide to place something more interesting here, you would of course have to change all of this setup, but having watched this series, it shouldn't cause you any problems.